You want to stand out for all the right reasons, right? Well then listen up. We're going to dive into the eight unspoken deal breakers that you might not even realize are killing your chances with women. Chapter 1. Poor Grooming Habits Alright, let's cut to the chase. Poor grooming habits are more than just a superficial problem. They are a loud, glaring message about who you are, what you prioritize. When you don't take care of your appearance, it showcases a lack of self-respect. You might think that you're being casual, but it comes off as you don't care about even the most basic of self-care. If you show up smelling like yesterday's workout, it isn't just unpleasant, it is thoughtless. It's about signaling that you value the time and company of those around you. Think about it. She's made the effort to present her best self when you can't be bothered to do the same. Doesn't exactly scream equality or mutual respect. And then there's the maturity angle. Mature individuals understand the importance of cleanliness and presentation. You wouldn't be too happy if the girl that showed up to the date had unwashed hair and smelled awful, would you? That exact same thing applies to you. Now, before you start whining about, that's too much work, stop. This is basic. It's bare minimum. If you can't handle this, well, then you have many, many other things to reevaluate. Chapter 2. Neediness and Clinginess Let's get this one thing straight. Bombarding a woman with constant messages and clinging on to her like a lifeboat is like admitting that you don't have anything better to do. Neediness is not cute. It's cringe-worthy. Thinking you're showing affection by becoming her shadow? No. It's just making you look desperate. Clinging on to someone is not a sign of love. It's a sign that you're missing something in your own life. No one wants to be the solution to your boredom. That's not the kind of puzzle piece that she's looking for. Here's the reality. Listen close. A woman wants to see that you have your own stuff going. You got your own stuff going on. Your own interests, friends, a life that doesn't revolve around her. It's not about playing hard to get. It's about showing that you're a whole package, not a half person looking for a sidekick. So instead of being her personal assistant, get a grip on your own life, have hobbies, hang out with your buddies, and let her have her own space too. A relationship should be a partnership, not a one-man show. Show her that you're secure and you're complete in yourself. That is what's truly attractive. Chapter 3. Arrogance and Self-Centeredness Alright, let's talk about something that's not winning you any points. Arrogance. Yeah, sure, confidence is cool, but if you're using every conversation as an opportunity to inflate your own ego, you are walking dangerous waters. Not a single soul that has lived or ever will live wants to listen to a self-absorbed monologue about your accomplishments, possessions, or how awesome you are. Seriously, you really think she wants to listen to that? Sure, if she asks directly about some particular achievements, go right ahead. But if that's all you can talk about to keep the conversation going, you're such a lost soul. She isn't taking you to the next stage. Here's the real deal. Genuine confidence doesn't need to shout. It doesn't need to constantly remind others of how great it is. It's, just, it's a classic thing of, uh, even Stephen Hawking says, the number one sign of unintelligence is somebody who boasts about their intelligence. It's a paraphrase, but it's about the point. It's about showing interest in her, you know, asking about her experiences, finding common ground to connect on. It's not a one-way street when you're the only one talking. And trust me, no one cares about how many fancy cars you own if you can't even hold a decent conversation. Chapter 4. Being too aggressive. Let's put it simply, aggression is a buzzkill. Pushing boundaries, invading personal space. These are actions that scream, run away, to any sensible woman and they will run for the hills. Imagine somebody making you uncomfortable by getting all up in your grill or pushing you to do things that you're not comfortable with. Not a pleasant thought, right? Well, guess what? She's not into it either, bud. Being overly aggressive doesn't make you look assertive or dominant. It makes you look like a jerk who doesn't care about her feelings. So, get a grip. Focus on creating an atmosphere that's relaxed, enjoyable, respectful, Show that you can respect her boundaries and make her feel comfortable. No woman is going to want to spend time with you, let alone be with you, if she doesn't feel comfortable being around you in public. Chapter 5. Ignoring Boundaries Alright, let's set something straight right away. Boundaries matter. It's not just some buzzword. It is a fundamental aspect of treating someone with respect. And don't start frowning on that word. 
respect. This deal is what gets you women worth having. Ignoring her boundaries is like slapping her in the face. Whether you're crowding her personal space, digging into topics she's not ready to discuss, or pressuring her into something she's not comfortable with, you are sending out vibes of insensitivity and zero consideration. Think about it this way. You wouldn't want someone stomping all over your emotional and physical space, would you? Well, guess what? She doesn't want that either. Crossing her boundary shows you're more interested in getting your way than in treating her like a human being with feelings. So, if you want to be more than just a blip on her radar, start paying attention to her signals. Listen when she talks, respect her personal space, and treat her feelings with care. It's about creating an atmosphere where she feels respected, understood, and valued. Not a single woman on this planet will stick around for someone who bulldozes over her comfort zones. Chapter 6. Oversharing Too Soon Time to talk about another common misstep. Oversharing. Look, I get it. Opening up is important. But here's the cold, hard truth. Unloading your emotional baggage on her within the first few interactions is a one-way ticket to making her feel overwhelmed and frankly weirded out. Imagine meeting someone for the first time and they're throwing their deepest traumas and struggles at you like they're tossing confetti. Yeah, it's not exactly the smoothest introduction, is it? Well, guess what? She feels the same way. Oversharing too soon is like dropping a mountain of emotional bricks on her and expecting her to juggle them. So instead of unloading everything on her like you're auditioning for a reality show, take it slow. Build the connection. Get to know each other bit by bit and let that sharing evolve naturally. Yes, it's important to be vulnerable, but it is also crucial to give her space to get to know you at a pace that's comfortable for both of you. Preferably keep yourself more of a mystery. Don't reveal all your cards. The more she wants to know about you and the less she does know about you, the more attractive that you'll be to her. Chapter 7. Trying too hard. You want her to notice you. I get it. But here's the truth. Constantly seeking her validation, showering her with gifts like some kind of love-struck Santa, or bending over backwards to be her personal doormat, you are going to be tossed into the eternal friend zone in a split second. And let's be honest here. Let's be brutally honest. It screams that you're about as confident as a scared puppy. When you're trying too hard, you're practically begging for validation and... Believe me, it shows. Oh, buddy, all oh, those poor women. This right there, that's about as attractive as a soggy piece of bread. Instead of throwing yourself at her feet, focus on being comfortable in your own skin. Confidence? Yeah, that's the real deal. Be authentic, be yourself, and let her see the person that you genuinely are. If you're genuine and you don't feel the need to beg for approval, she's more likely to be drawn to you like a moth to a flame. But if you're putting on a desperate show, well, don't be surprised if she's sprinting in the opposite direction. Authenticity. That is what you need to go after. Chapter 8. Being indecisive. You can't decide where you want to eat, what movie to watch, what shirt to wear. Oh, it's cute. For about five minutes. But being constantly indecisive is a straight-up romance killer. Let's break down why. First off, when you can't make a call on the small stuff, it screams a lack of confidence. Every shrug and mutter, I don't know, whatever you want. What she's hearing is, I can't handle making a decision. And while compromise is key in any relationship, if you're constantly shirking the responsibility of choice, doesn't exactly exude charm or confidence. Also, if you can't make the tiny decisions, how is she supposed to trust you with the big ones? Your constant maybes don't just make you look insecure and unsure, they make you look unreliable. It's the emotional equivalent of being chronically late. Sure, it's a small thing, but over time, those little hesitations and delays stack up, turning your indecisiveness into a big, looming question mark over your reliability. And it goes without saying, that's a turnoff. Both short-term on a first date, or before one, or long-term in a relationship, by avoiding these mistakes, you're not only increasing your chances of getting her attention, but also showing her that you're a man who respects and understands her boundaries, values, and desires. So get out there, Tiger. Do me proud.